I'm going to tell you how you can use the ADA marketing formula to explode your engagement on Instagram. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I help people to create better content so they can build an engaged community and turn their knowledge into income. Today I want to talk about the ADA marketing formula, exactly what it is, how to use it and some of my top tips to make sure while you're using the formula you can explode your engagement on Instagram and take your page to the next level. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. ADA, what does it stand for? A is attention, I is interest, D is desire or details, and A is action. Now, why was it created? Why is it used in the first place? Quite simply, the formula describes the stages that people go through before they decide to invest in your brand. And that investment can be financially, they're buying something, or it can be a time investment of them engaging with your content. The whole point of the ADA formula is to maximize the amount of people actually reading our content. The idea being that if we can get more people to read our content and actually read the words we're putting out there, then more people would engage, more people will take action, which ultimately will lead to more growth and more engagement over time. The first stage is attention. It's your job on Instagram to stop the scroll, to grab people's attention and bring them into your content. But how can we do that? We can do it in two ways. The first way is visually. What I want you to think about is a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, we have the ultra minimal visual style. On the other end of the spectrum is the bold, in your face, visually oriented style of making content. You have to pick a side. If you create your content visually in a way that sits in the middle of this spectrum, that's where 90% of content is made. That's where the noise on Instagram is. So if you can go to either side of the spectrum, straight away, you can grab people's attention because you're different, because you're extreme. The other way to grab attention is through your headline. Your headline needs to be very, very specific. You have to target a specific problem that your audience has. So your headline paired with your visual both work together to grab the attention of your audience and ultimately spark that curiosity that makes them want to swipe and begin reading your carousel. The next stage of the formula is interest. The main aim of this part of the formula is simply to get people engaged in what it is you're talking about. If you can get people invested, if you can get them reading as much as possible within the first few slides of your carousel or your content, then the idea is that because they are investing that time, people aren't just gonna then walk away and leave. They want to know the outcome. They want to know what's going to happen. The mistake people make is they put way too much information way too much writing in those first few slides on their carousels. All that does is scare people off because they're not prepared to start investing that much time, that much energy without knowing what the post is about or what the payoff is going to be. So as a general rule of thumb, on your first few slides, so let's say from slide two to slide five, use anywhere from one word to 15 words on those slides and make sure that you're building the context of the idea or the context behind the problem that you're trying to solve for people. Just by doing this, you're gonna get much more people reading your content, getting through to the meat of the next stage of the formula, which is desire or details. So this next stage of the formula is simply to give people the answer that they're looking for, to give people the payoff of the investment they've made on your post already. The best way to do this is to give people really actionable advice. And you can do this in the form of lists, you can do a step-by-step -step formula, you can do a, a short how-to tutorial, you can do uh, recaps on the points you've made, you can give a very strong statement, a very strong takeaway that gives people the solution to the problem that they're trying to solve. And remember, if you want to, you can put more information into these next few slides. So on slide six, seven, eight, and nine as well if you want to, you can go much heavier in terms of the amount of writing you put into it because now people are invested. 
Now people will want that outcome, so they're much more likely to read it. And once we give people this advice and outcome they want, then we move on to the next stage, which is the action we want them to take. What action do you want people to take after they've read your piece of content? Now, most likely you want them to engage with that post. Now, to get people engaged, there's a few things you can do. First thing, make sure you ask them a question, a question that is easy to answer. So we're not talking about a yes or no question, but we're asking them a question that's related to what you've just spoken about, related to the problem you've just solved for that person. Better yet, if that question can be something that's related to one of the last things you've just said, that makes it much more likely that people engage because what you will find anyway, even with using the Ada marketing formula, is that most people are really switched on, are really consuming what you're saying on the first few slides. So slide one, two, and maybe three as well. After that, some people tend to switch off and they glaze over the content a bit more than you would like them to. But once you get to the desire, once you get to the real actionable advice, they switch back on, they start reading again in a much more engaged manner. And it's one of the last things you say that people remember. So if you can create your question around one of the last statements or around one of the main points that you've made, it makes it much more likely that people will engage and take the action that you want them to. Okay, here's some top tips for you when using the Ada formula. First thing is less is more. Now less is more in pretty much every single aspect, whether that's less images, but more importantly, less writing, because funny enough, the less you write, the more people read. And if they read more of what you're actually writing, you can have more impact, you can get your message across exactly how you want it to. Next point, don't always try to use a curiosity headline, okay? Be very direct with your headlines. Tell people exactly what it is you're going to cover. Because as a stranger coming across your content on Instagram, they don't know who you are, they don't trust you, they've never invested time into you. So if your headline is purely trying to pique their curiosity, they can't believe, they don't trust that you can deliver on that promise or you can deliver and give them something that's worth their time. So they're not going to invest their time with you. Instead, you have to be very direct so that it piques their interest, yes, but it tells people exactly what to expect. So then they're much more likely to take that risk. They're much more likely to click and read your content. And the final tip, make sure you're using as many illustrations as possible. So this isn't necessarily have to be an image, but it could be a diagram. It could be shapes because language, writing, it gets lost in translation. What I say in English, someone in another country might not understand. But if I'm using images, if I'm using diagrams to get across my ideas, that can't get lost in translation because everyone understands a photo. Everyone can see the emotion on an image or everyone can understand a diagram or a graph or a chart. So if possible, use illustrations in your content because it helps more of your audience to resonate and then ultimately helps more of them to engage, which helps you in the long run of getting more engagement and more growth over time. So there you have it. That's the Ada formula. You've learned what it is, how to use it, and some of my top tips to get the most from the formula itself. But remember, it's just a formula. You don't have to follow it step by step. If you can, learn why it works, and in that way you can develop your own formulas over time, which will help you to really stand out from your competition. Okay guys, so hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna learn more about how I create my content, check out this video here. That's gonna show you step-by-step step how I create my carousels from scratch in Adobe Illustrator, or this video here, which tells you my favorite content creation hacks to creating content much faster. All right guys, so thank you for watching. Don't forget to drop a thumbs up if you like the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.